Hello again, everyone, and welcome to TV 31 on 1. I'm your host, Casey Kendrick, and this week, part two with the athletic director for Oklahoma State University, Coach Mike Holder. Coach Holder, in week one, told us a lot about growing up a little bit in Texas, talked a lot about just some of the, the relationships that he had with his parents and some of his fond memories of growing up as an only child, including his golf game, and really how he got into golf. Week two, we wanted to explore that a little bit more. What helped shape the person that he is today, and how did he end up at Oklahoma State? Growing up in Texas could have easily been a Longhorn, but it was a conversation with his dad that really turned the tide and led him to a path straight to Stillwater. It was his mom and his coach, though, that definitely helped shape who he is today and make no bones about it. Coach Holder lets us know exactly who the greatest coach of all time is, regardless of the sport. We got in the car to and, and try to back up a little bit. I walked into this. I don't really know how to describe the clubhouse at Lakeside. It, uh, gosh, that place was unique. But he had, he had built that thing with his own hands, that whole golf course, and obviously probably the Is clubhouse. that Labron Harris had? Yeah, he I built did. that. It's amazing. See, I, yeah, I knew I'd learned something here. Yeah, the story goes, with volunteer labor, before they built Lakeside, they had a, a nine-hole maybe or 18-hole sand green course out where the uh, cross-country course is now, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. north of the married student house. Mm -hmm. And if you go out there today, you can still see the remnants of some of those sand greens. Is that right? Yeah, well. You know what to look for. And so he decided we needed sand greens in a legitimate 18-hole golf course here in Stillwater. And I think he made that decision as soon as he was hired by Henry Iba, I think it was 1946, to coach the golf team. I think he was working as a teacher in Guthrie. And um, I don't know if he had built or designed the country club in Guthrie before he came to Stillwater or he designed that after he came to Stillwater. I know he designed that country club. He also designed Cushman Country Club. Wow, wow. Um, so he got the community excited about the possibility of a golf course. And with volunteer labor and volunteer equipment, what they could scrape together, and $500, he built the front nine at Lakeside. Now, where, who, who donated the land? Did the city provide the land? The city, the city did. Okay, so he had, to, he, had to, he had to really do some finagling early on yeah. to make that happen. Yeah, he was a unique person. <laughs> so after they built the front nine, they splurged on the back nine. They, he got $1,000 to get on that one. And they built 18 holes. And then he was the head pro, the green superintendent, chief cook, cook and bottle washer. He opened the doors in the morning, closed at night, and he taught uh, at least half time, I think, or three quarter time in the College of Business and coached the golf team all wow. wrapped into one. He was the best player out there and the toughest negotiator and the tightest fisted, <laughs> other than my mother, person on the planet. I'm going to rush way ahead of the story because we got to come back. But I find this intriguing that, okay, first off, you talk about you, the influence of your mother and obviously her being very, you know, good with money, frugal, call it what you want. But in those days, I would say good with money. You have a coach that builds a golf course and is obviously very frugal and builds a championship golf team. It, it would seem your training ground was really doggone good looking yeah. at Mike Holder today, building a golf course, being very frugal and, and deliberate in a lot of things. So, I mean, that it is amazing how those two parallel. And, and I say this, I'm not so sure that Labor and Harrison, the greatest coach in any sport that I've run into. Wow. You lump them all in there, you know, bring all your Nick Sabins and Newt Rockneys and all of them. I'd put Labor and Harris up there with anybody. And when I, he made such an impression on me that visit. And then I looked around that broken down old golf shop. They had a few sets of golf clubs displayed on the walls. And between those golf clubs, he had these all American plaques. It's like an eight by 10. And I thought, wow, you can make all American in golf. I didn't see any of this in OU or Norman, Oklahoma. And then they had a national championship trophy on the mantle fireplace. Yeah. And uh, I realized quickly that, whoa, this is a whole different deal about golf here. This is really serious. And so we left, and on the drive back to Ardmore, my dad said, uh, 
son, I know they didn't offer you any financial aid there and you have a pretty good deal at OU, but just know this, your mother and I uh, saved our whole life for you to go to college. Wow, how about that? So, so he told me just to go where I wanted to. Did that get in the way of the OU thing initially at all? No, I didn't. It, it, oh, you, Texas didn't know who I was. That probably could have got my attention down there. Now. But but going to OU would have been okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. because I know I know Bedlam today. I don't know Bedlam from the early '70s, but I know Bedlam today. Uh, and listen, if you live in Ardmore, you're an OU football fan. Uh, I mean, that, that was in 1963, four, five, six. I mean, uh, yeah, I think we beat OU a couple of times in there speaking of Oklahoma State, but OU football was it in mm -hmm. the state of Oklahoma and really in this area. So everybody in Ardmore is a Sooner. They're a Sooner fan. So I, but with your coming from Odessa, I just wondered if that, that you know, ever ever interfered. I can't I can't go play for them. But I just I wanted to go play golf. Well, <laughs> and, and again, I'm going to rush. I don't like rushing the story whatsoever because I find this stuff fascinating. Mm. But you know, when, when Mike Gundy says, I need to display the Heisman Trophy or a coach, come, you, I mean, look at Karsten. Obviously, Karsten is a showcase of golf and who's who in golf. Um, you very deliberately, very in, understand the importance of showing off your history. That I would think for coaches, you immediately get that. Well, yeah, you want, you want that youngster to see himself in the uh, the pictures on the wall and the plaques that hang up for all Americans uh, in the trophies that are displayed uh, that's what it is it's dreams yeah. making dreams come true so yeah uh, John Smith talks about this and I remember it back in old Gallagher Hall there used to be pictures uh, you know you had your uh, oh, the basketball court and then there was a brick wall you know around the perimeter of it and then offices outside that brick wall. Well, along the top portion of the brick wall were eight by 10 pictures and they had areas for each sport, golf, wrestling, football, everybody. And I remember walking through there as a freshman and seeing all the guys that had come before me that mm -hmm. they thought enough of to put their picture up there and thinking, I want my picture up there yeah. when I leave. You yeah. know? So those kind of things inspire youngsters to, to try to be better, to try to achieve great things, to, you know, I say all the time, coaching is about making dreams come true and inspiring people. Uh, what you dream about, what you talk about, what you think about, what you work toward, that's what will happen. It's inevitable. You can do anything in the whole world if you just make up your mind. And you, a sport like golf or any sport, you have to have a little bit of talent, but that's really a small part of the equation. It's more about want to and competitiveness. Did Coach understand, really, the sacrifices that his parents made at the time? What about budgeting? The first job he had as a head coach, did he understand the budget process and really what he had to operate with? And meeting the love of his life, Robbie Holder. How did it happen? Coach has got a lot of details. If you haven't been to TS Fork at White Barn Estates lately, we have an exciting new concept to tell you about. It's called Thirsty Thursdays and it includes four courses of the same high quality food as our other nights and some of the best mixed drinks you've ever had. Best of all, no reservations are required. And while you're there, relax with a drink on our covered patio and check out the gift shop with Made in Oklahoma products. Go to tsfork.com for more details and to check out our upcoming special menus. To all of our neighbors, friends, the people we see every day, we come to you today with no news or announcement, but to let you know what's on our hearts. Because quite simply, we feel honored. You're the reason that what we do is so much more meaningful than a job. The reason we believe in the power of investing in tomorrow. But you're also the reason we believe in the power of sharing the same neighborhoods and a loyalty that's bigger than any challenge. So this is simply thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to move forward and grow, but never lose sight of the roots that connect us. As we step boldly into a time of change and innovation, consider this our promise that every investment in our hospital is an investment in our communities. Because you're the reason we love what we do 
and love where we live. The McCafe is now featuring cold brew coffee and cold brew frappes. Face the day with a cold brew coffee from the McCafe with a rich cold brew coffee blended with ice for a creamy frozen drink that's colder than cold brew. Or refresh with a cold creamy frappe. We start with a cold brew coffee blended ice and topped with whipped cream and rich chocolate drizzle for a great anytime frozen treat. McDonald's in Stillwater, Perkins, Perry, and Cushing. I'm loving it. Kent and Barbara Houck have been saying they're a one-stop shop for many years. In 1951, the Houck Agency began insuring Oklahomans and since has expanded to insure people in 11 states across the country. The Houck Agency can find the policy that fits your needs from business health coverage, individual health, home, auto, and long-term health care policies. They have a staff that can take care of financial planning, including retirement and investing. And Barbara Houck has been a realtor for over 35 years, and her contacts helped her buy and sell homes and commercial properties across the state one-stop shop the hauk agency 801 south main in stillwater call statewide toll free at 800-543-8588 the hauk agency when experience counts well going into break we talked about coach talking about his love of his life and he has a lot of details we'll get to that in just a little bit we'll talk about the sacrifices that his parents made but this is also a time when coach told us a little bit about a couple of things one the games that were played in the golf wagon heading to different events and tournaments, and one of the things you absolutely did not do if you were going to play for Coach Harris. So you, you get emotional when you talk about your dad saying, we've saved our whole lives. Uh, if this is where you want to go, we're, we're here for you. Were you, at the time, did you did it did it hit you like that then? Did, I mean, were you were you cognitive cognizant enough of, of the magnitude of how that was going to potentially shape your entire life? No, I knew that. You know, they had told me that we, I was going to go to college. I really didn't have a choice. So uh, I don't think I really understood the magnitude of it, and I don't know what a college education was back then. I know say that was 1966 so in 1973 when I became the head coach uh, my whole budget was twenty seven thousand dollars so now to put that in perspective for you that included what they paid me which was sixty five hundred dollars wow. that included all the scholarships all the team travel all the recruiting all the equipment all the memberships that we had to pay at Lakeside so that all added up to twenty seven thousand dollars so you know, I'm, I'm going to guess a full ride was probably worth 2000 maybe, I don't know, maybe 2500 Wasn't a lot, but back in those days, to my mother and father, it was a lot of money. A ton of money, sure. It's the same thing at Dornick Hills. It was $20 a month to join that golf course. Well, neither my mother or father played golf. So for the first year I was down there, I had to wait until golf season came around in March to play. And after I did that for a year, they figured out some way to pay the $20 wow. a month to go out there just for me to play golf. And then I never will forget occasionally they'd let me on the Saturday go upstairs in the dining room and order a cheeseburger. That was, <laughs> that, it's kind of the greatest <laughs> thing ever. It's amazing. I still remember that like it was yesterday. Simple things. I mean, the simple things are the ones that, you know, yeah. we, we get caught up in big things, but simple things mean a ton, obviously. Um, so, Robbie. Where'd you meet Robbie? It's a long story. And that's okay. We got, I got time if you got listen, time. Listen, this is, uh, so I, I, you couldn't play as a freshman. So I redshirt, I didn't redshirt, I just didn't play. You had a few freshman matches. So you have three years to, of eligibility once you hit your sophomore year. And uh, so you got three years of eligibility and four years to use them. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to redshirt because I'd wanted to re I'd wanted to stay back a year when uh, in junior high school or even high school. Um, I wanted to play football. I wanted to play baseball. I was young for my age. Um, I was barely 18. I, I had my 18th birthday, I think, uh, the day before I left for college. So I was wow. really young. So I I wanted to redshirt. I wanted to mature. I realized that I, I was looking down the road at how good I might be that fifth year as opposed to how good I was that year but they needed me mm -hmm. and so the first tournament of the spring we went to Las Cruces New Mexico and we drove in a station wagon six of us <laughs> five players and coach Harris 
that was, I could talk forever <laughs> about that now. That's one enter entertaining fella. <laughs> and you talk about smart, we, we play these games. You tell jokes and stories, and but we play these games where you could just throw out any number you want to. You just start making them up, and we'd have someone assigned to write down the numbers. So you could say things like 3,422 divided by 36 times 22 and divided by 10 by the square root of whatever. Just make it up. Somebody's writing these down, and we didn't have a calculator. So after you come up with the, the sequence of numbers, you'd work on it, where that, and you'd say, okay. Now, in Coach Harris, I got, I got to go back. He would spit the number out. As soon as whoever finished calling out the numbers, he'd tell he you knew the it. answer. You knew the answer. And so you'd, three minutes later, <laughs> I'll be doggone. It, you know, it's whatever the number is. Yeah. You know? So that was pretty fascinating. And then tell stories. So we got to the tournament. And I was just mesmerized by this golf course because it was really hard. I hadn't seen anything quite like that other than Dorney Kills. And then we were going to play the national championship there in uh, May or June. So this was a prelude to that. And the last hole of the tournament, it was a par five dog leg left. And I wasn't playing great that round, just okay. And I thought, well, I need to make an eagle on this last hole. It's par five. I'll cut the dog leg. Well, the only problem was this out of bounds was right along the edge of the dog leg. And one thing you didn't do playing for Coach Harris was hit the ball out of bounds if there's a place somewhere else that you could hit with no penalty. Mm -hmm. And you had all of whatever county that was <laughs> in Las Cruces to the right, but do not hit it left. Yeah. Well, I didn't quite make it over the out of bounds. The second one didn't quite make it over. I don't know how many I hit out of bounds, but it was too many. <laughs> well, you have broken Coach's number one rule. Now what? How did Coach react, and what was the suggestion that you probably couldn't make today? Since 1957, the hideaway has been a staple in Stillwater. Times may have changed since the hideaway originally opened, but the great pizza and friendly atmosphere has never wavered. Stop in at 230 South Knobloch Street and try one of our specialty pizzas, including the Paradise Pie with Alfredo sauce, chicken, bacon, mushroom, spinach, and fresh tomato. Or for those meat lovers, check out the Big Country featuring pepperoni, bacon, Italian sausage, Canadian bacon, and cheddar cheese. And for a starter, try the famous fried mushrooms. The Hideaway. Dine in or call 372-4777 for takeout or delivery. Get ready to turn up the fun this June in America's friendliest college town. Feeling fruity? And 40 Berries has four varieties of blackberries right for the picking. Get your kitchen ready for jam, jellies, and cobbler. Outdoor adventures are happening every week in June at Lake McMurtry's Adventure Camp. Give your children a one-of-a-kind experience learning about the great outdoors. Find family-friendly fun every Thursday in June at Summer on the Plaza. Water slides, live music, and bounce houses galore at the OSU Student Union. This is one bash you don't want to miss with bull riders, bullfighters, and funny people keeping the crowd entertained. Where can you find pottery classes, pop-up art shops, paint supplies, and a farmer's market? It's all at the Prairie Art Center, downtown Stillwater. Don't miss a beat in America's friendliest college town. Kent and Barbara Houck have been saying they're a one-stop shop for many years. In 1951, the Houck Agency began insuring Oklahomans and since has expanded to insure people in 11 states across the country. The Houck Agency can find the policy that fits your needs from business health coverage, individual health, home, auto, and long-term health care policies. They have a staff that can take care of financial planning, including retirement and investing. And Barbara Houck has been a realtor for over 35 years and her contacts helped her buy and sell homes and commercial properties across the state. One stop shop, the Hauk Agency. 801 South Main in Stillwater. Call statewide toll free at 800 543 8588. The Hauk Agency, when experience counts. Hi, Casey Kendrick, along with Tom Dorado, inviting you to join us each week for Out of Bounds. We talk to guys like Andre Williams, we yeah. talk bracketology, we talk to Guys like uh, Jim Mattel, Bill Annan, we'll talk to Mike Boynton, we'll talk to Colin Carmichael. Who don't we talk to? Well, all they have to do is ask, and they come down. And that's the beauty of this show, I think, is the fact that you get the chance to get inside a program. I wouldn't say inside their head. But inside <laughs> a program 
and they tell you all you need to know. We have a good time with all our guests, and we just have a good time here. Absolutely. Difference makers in sports all across the region. High school sometimes, sometimes collegiate, doesn't matter. We get a chance to talk to them all. It's Out of Bounds. Catch it each and every week. The raw version, unedited. Mm. You get a chance to see all the ugliness of putting a show together <laughs> every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. That's right. The edited version, uh, Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock, Thursday nights at 8 o'clock, and Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. from our Oklahoma Ag Credit Studios. It's Out of Bounds Weekly right here on TV 31. Well, Coach had a bad round of golf, and that led to some, some suggestions from Coach Harris, and it also led to his eventual wife wanting to be his caddy, Coach explains. <laughs> and so when he found out what I shot and how I did it, it was chilly. And then we had to drive. Can imagine this, drive from uh, Las Cruces to Houston. Now, it's the same distance as to Los Angeles. It's a long drive. <laughs> Texas is a big state. And it, it seemed like the whole way there, he was on me, <laughs> pointing out how you're dumb as a post. <laughs> I've told you. Uh, I'm not sure you're cut out for this game. He's all right on all these points. And then finally he started on, <clears throat> and I, knew, I had no girlfriends, I only cared about golf, so I'd, I'd go to class, just get that out of the way, and then I'd go to the golf course and I'd stay out there in the dark. And uh, he knew that I had no interest in anything else, and he said, maybe you're just a lover. <laughs> I'm not, not sure you could say that in today's world, by the way. I love her. Maybe you're just a lover. You know, maybe you should be worried about girls, you know. And at the team meeting every year, he'd say, there's certain things that are going to be the, the bane of we're going to have five, eight freshmen here, and two of you are going to flunk out, and three of you are going to get a girlfriend and forget about <laughs> you, and he named all these things that we're going to get wipe out this freshman class, and here he's suggesting to me, <laughs> I'm thinking I'm going to play the game for a living, he suggested maybe you should get a girlfriend. He said, this next tournament, they have a king of the queens, a lover of the tournament, and maybe that's the role for you, and I thought, oh, he's just fun in me, you know. And we get there, and it's this is a really big deal. This tournament, back in that day, was on television. It had the pep band out there, the Palm Squad, the cheerleaders. Wow. I mean, it was a really big production. It had 30 golf teams there. Nothing like it even today in today's world in college golf. And the coach there, Dave Williams, was a really big promoter. And the night before the tournament started, they had this huge extravaganza of a banquet. And as part of this, you know, we walk into this banquet hall and there's golf teams everywhere, dignitaries. It was a big deal for the community, mm -hmm. too. And I noticed all these co-eds sitting over there at a big long table. There's a lot of those. And come to find out, we get ready to have the program and the MC it was a guy named Morris Frank, who was hilarious. He told a bunch of Aggie jokes, which <laughs> go over really well down there. People are laughing. And then he said, well, before we get into the program tonight, we have a, an order of business. We need to name the king of the queens, the lover of the tournament. And I went, holy smoke. <laughs> there is such a thing. Yeah. No, it couldn't be me, right? <laughs> and sure enough, Coach Harris, he did me in. And the guy says, yeah, this year we've got a young man whose name fits this role perfectly. His last name is Holder. Mr. Holder, would you get up? So I had to stand up, blushed, really shy. and. Uh, Mr. Holder, would you go over and have a seat with your queen, you know, your court over here, your uh -huh. queens? Oh, my goodness, I have to go sit with all these girls? What am I going to say? <laughs> so I'll go over there and sit down. And then the order of the evening was the highlight. Every team captain went up to the podium and drew a name of one of these young women out, and that was your hostess for the week. She was your queen. She kind of hospitality, you know, mm -hmm. it was nice to you. So Greer Jones was our captain, and he drew my wife's name out of the hat. So I didn't realize this time. I'm just traumatized because they keep drawing <laughs> the names of the girls that I've met right by me that I can kind of carry on a conversation with. And they get up to go with some team. Now I have to move down uh -huh. and meet another one. Uh -huh. you know? I didn't think this evening was ever going to be over. <laughs> so the next morning, the we start the tournament. And the tournament in Las Cruces was five players count four. And this one was four count, four players count four. And the odd man out was my roommate, Jim Young. And he decided to walk along and watch me play since he couldn't play. And Robbie, who was our hostess, 
he was the only person to talk to, so she just walked along and talked to him. And she watched all 18 holes. And uh, after the round was over, Jim's, he got the word that his grandfather passed away, so he had to leave to go to the funeral. And so Robbie comes out the next day, and she just follows my group again. I'm not paying any attention to her. And so the next day, she comes up to me, and she said, uh, Hey, you know, I caddy for my brother all the time. I don't know if she did. <laughs> Would you like for me to caddy for you? And I said, no. <laughs> I'm already in trouble with my coach. You need to stay away from me. Stay away, uh, you know. And so it was four rounds. And after the tournament was over, we loaded up in the station wagon, and we went back to Stillwater. And she goes home and tells her roommate she's going to marry me. Where do you go for computer help? Gigabytes. Gigabyte staff are experts in virus removal, software updates, and faster running computers. Gigabytes also provide small business support and network support, including websites. And they do laptop screen replacements, and they do all kinds of cosmetic repairs as well. Whatever your computer needs, they are the ones that can provide you with the answers and solutions to get you up and running. Gigabytes, 918 South Main, open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6, or call 533-1715. There's only one place you should go for new and expecting moms. Charlie's Baby, inside Charlie's Drug. You can choose from a wide range of unique products to support mom before, during, and after pregnancy and throughout her breastfeeding journey. Let our dedicated staff assist you in choosing the perfect gift to support mom or help spoil that precious baby. Our unique selection is guaranteed to make your gift their very favorite. Visit us today at Charlie Baby, inside Charlie's Drug. Get ready to turn up the fun this June in America's friendliest college town. Feeling fruity? And 40 Berries has four varieties of blackberries right for the picking. Get your kitchen ready for jam, jellies, and cobbler. Outdoor adventures are happening every week in June at Lake McMurtry's Adventure Camp. Give your children a one-of-a-kind experience learning about the great outdoors. Find family-friendly fun every Thursday in June at Summer on the Plaza. Water slides, live music, and bounce houses galore at the OSU Student Union. This is one bash you don't want to miss with bull riders, bullfighters, and funny people keeping the crowd entertained. Where can you find pottery classes, pop-up art shops, paint supplies, and a farmer's market? It's all at the Prairie Art Center, downtown Stillwater. Don't miss a beat in America's friendliest college town. To our neighbors and friends, we come to you today to let you know what's on our hearts. Because you're the reason what we do is so much more meaningful than a job. The reason we believe in the power of investing in tomorrow and the power of community. So this is simply, thank you. As we step boldly into a time of growth and change, consider this our promise, that every investment in our hospital is an investment in our communities. Have you tried TS4 yet? They have great meals being served weekly on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. But I want to tell you about their incredible Sunday lunches. Every Sunday from 11 to 2, you can drop in at TS4 at White Barn Estates for a lunch like Grandma used to make. The menu changes weekly, but it includes selections like fried chicken, roast beef, meatloaf, and all the fixings. No reservations needed, special pricing for kids, and a great home-cooked meal at T.S. Fork. And while you're there, check out the gift shop with Made in Oklahoma products and items you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at tsfork.com. There's another show with Coach Mike Holder, the athletic director at Oklahoma State University. So far, again, we've really just scratched the surface. We still have four more parts to this six-part series. And... You know, Coach, uh, again, is, is so well-rounded in the, in the art of Oklahoma State and how Oklahoma State has developed. He's been so instrumental in so many things that have happened in the last several decades at Oklahoma State, more specifically the last decade as the athletic director. We talk about those things eventually, but coming up next week, we continue with his relationship with Robbie and marriage in general. In fact, Coach has his four stages of marriage. And the quicker you can get to stage four, the smoother the ride will be. Next week, we'll explain right here on TV 3101.